Be seated. We will call to order our meeting right at 9 o'clock. Thank you so much for that timeliness. Uh, this morning, we have the opportunity to be able to get an update on our Lakeland Fire Department, which is not only an exceptional department nationally in terms of rating, but also in terms of the quality of the employees that are hired and they're on that team. Mike Williams, our assistant chief, is going to discuss operations, challenges, and resiliency along. Actually, it's going to be our chief that's going to kick this off, and I will back off. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Doug Riley, fire chief. Um, I get the honor of just saying good morning to all of you, and thank you all for uh, having us this morning. And uh, I'm going to introduce our presenter this morning. It will not be Assistant Chief Mike Williams. We got our brand new Battalion Chief Jason Busby, who served as a rescue captain throughout the whole COVID pandemic, is going to do the update for us. So, Captain Busby. Captain Busby, thank you. All right, Chief Busby. <laughs> oh. Still new. All right, Chief Busby. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. On behalf of the fire department, I would like to thank you all for your time and the opportunity to share this valu valuable information that pertains to fire department functions over the past year and a half due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Although we began hearing about the virus spreading in other countries as well as other states in our own country, March 19th, 2020 marks the day of the first confirmed COVID case in Polk County. Initial reaction of our frontline responders, our guys were feeling uh, fear due to the unknown. We, we were and still are dependent on the CDC and Florida Department of Health for guidance moving forward. Once information became available, oftentimes it was conflicting. We have politics in the evening news and then we were getting updates also from, from medical. Sometimes that was conflicting. Responders were often afraid of contracting the virus while on calls and then taking it home to family members. There was no initial treatment, cure, or vaccine. We were also unsure what, what the availability of critical supplies was going to be as we moved forward. Luckily, we were able to quickly procure copious amounts of necessary PPE and cleaning supplies for our responders and stations. Our initial efforts and hurdles, our biggest was PPE. Leading up to the pandemic, there was a constant need. There was no constant need for higher level or the amount of PPE that we were now required to use. Most city departments donated their P100 masks and filters also that go, go with those masks to our guys. Everything that they had on hand came to us. Risk management created a supply chain that was remained uninterrupted throughout the pandemic. City supply has been an excellent resource. Fred Henderson and his group of employees have been an important factor in keeping LFD supplied with all of our needs. Fred can be called on at any time. If he doesn't have what we need on hand, he's quick to get it. We would like to say thank you, Mr. Henderson. <clears throat> he's in the building. Risk management developed a procurement policy for single point ordering of crit critical supplies. This allowed for financial tracking and reimbursement. paradigm shift for our responders. Our medical director, Dr. Banerjee, was quick to make necessary changes to medical protocols so they mesh with the CDC guidelines. We transitioned to having dispatchers question citizens who called 911 for medical assistance to determine if responders would be at risk for a possible exposure to the COVID-19 virus. We amended our internal response guidelines to include, we went from sending two to three rescuers in on every incident we went to sending just a single paramedic to make initial contact. In turn, this limited exposure when multiple resources weren't needed. If our one paramedic went in and made contact and realized he needed more help, then we would send a second or third in. We changed from wearing just um, gloves and goggles as needed to wearing full P100 respirators, Tyvek suits or surgical gowns. Every call we began wearing goggles and wearing gloves. Decontamination, we purchased eight electrostatic foggers, one for each station and one for the maintenance division. These were used daily to decontaminate the interiors of the station and apparatus, as well as medical equipment. The foggers were also used to decontaminate apparatus and equipment after possible and confirmed exposures to the virus. If you look at this, this screen there, you'll see one of our guys, this is him wearing his full PPE and he's got one of the foggers that we have. Um, we use a, a product that we got from Fred and his guys over at City Supply. 
uh, to put in those and use them to decon. One photo you'll see where he's deconning the inside of the truck and then the other, he's got his medical equipment uh, laying there next to the engine deconning it. Building strong partnerships. Lakeland Regional Health uh, was a huge partner with us. They provided continuous support for not only LFD, but also LPD. This allowed for public safety to continue to provide 24 hour services. They created a dedicated testing pathway for first responders with results expeditiously sent to our rescue captains. That way if we had folks that were negative, we could quickly get them back to duty or if they were positive, then we could get them the treatment they needed. They also expedited treatment for our first responders who contracted the virus and required some type of treatment. Um, human resources and risk management played a critical role. The Lake Christina Hunt was a primary point of contact and managed all COVID testing within the city. She was often calling employees at home to ensure the process was going smoothly. We would also like to thank Lynette Larmouth, Amanda Kaiser, and Marlo Roberts as they all played support roles throughout the pandemic. Our next slide shows workforce struggles with our testing. If you look there at year 2020, we tested a total of 257 of our guys with a total of 28 positive. Moving forward to the second wave in 2021, we tested 180 with 53 positive. So what this shows is we tested a lot less in 21 rather than in 2020. That was because we were following guidance on CDC and the Department of Health. So we were changing our exposure testing, whereas the beginning in 2020, pretty much anybody who had a suspected exposure, we were sending for a test, whether they had symptoms or not. So our numbers were much higher. And then if you look at the, the total positives, obviously we almost doubled in 21. So I think that's attributed to the, the how much more contagious the, the Delta variant was in the first. Talking more about workforce struggles, this is our incident count. So we've got 2019, 2020, and then the line graph shows 2021. Uh, with the exception of just a few months on that, on each of these graphs, you can see our call volume has substantially increased throughout the pandemic. Facility closures. All fire stations and the administration buildings were closed. We canceled public education events and in an attempt to internally slow the spread all training was suspended on september 1st 2021 to include the closure of our training center go through each of our divisions and talk about the impacts that it had on them our suppression division is our frontline first responders these guys were dealing with workforce fatigue continue exposures to the sick and ill and also peer exposures within the stations our prevention division paused routine inspections temporarily, although we did continue with plans reviews and new construction inspections to keep that stuff moving. Prior to September 1st, 2021, uh, COVID precautions prevented classroom group activities. Training was modified to occur, to, uh, to occur within the fire stations to limit more peer exposure. Our main, maintenance division uh, is compiled of a group of three uh, mechanics. They adapted to decontamination protocols for apparatus for beginning repairs. As I talked back uh, in the beginning, they, we bought a uh, electrostatic fogger for them. So as the trucks came in for repair, they used that to decon those vehicles before they get in it to limit their exposure. They were also dealing with supply chain issues that challenged our mechanics to be creative with repairs. So um, some th things they were unable to get, so they had to really get creative and maybe borrow it from another vehicle or wh whatever had to happen to get that frontline vehicle back on the road. Rescue division uh, has designated the rescue captains as on shift to manage all employee exposures, testing, treatment, and coordination with risk management to return to work. It's a very busy job. We were dealing with multiple tests daily. Um, and again, some positive, some negative. If they were positive, then we were working again with the late Christina. We dealt with her on every single COVID test that we had. And then moving forward, if we had somebody that was positive, she was lining them up, getting them in to meet with Marlo at risk, getting the paperwork we needed done, and then also scheduling them for treatments as needed. Emergency management. This division rapidly developed a city COVID pandemic plan, coordinated general employee exposure and testing with human resources and risk. Talks about where we are today. 
as I just mentioned, we were beginning September 1st of 2021, we went on an operational pause. It was a month long pause of non-essential duties instituted to focus resources on the core function of emergency response. This period allowed our responders to focus on their own health, wellness, and the reduction of peer exposures from group activities during the surge. We've also reduced non-emergent COVID calls to skilled medical facilities through dispatch screening. This has allowed our units to remain available for the more serious calls. Currently, we're witnessing drastic reduction of exposures and infection among our responders. This goes from limiting training and, and also reducing those calls. Uh, we did begin norma, normal, COVID, normal activities with COVID pre precautions October 1st. Things we're gonna consider for the future. We're dealing with the ever-changing pandemic has created a positive collaborative between all of our internal and external stakeholders. COVID has permanently altered the way that EMS fire service are delivered. Procedures have moved from a static to a dynamic procedure. Concer concerns exist with viral mutations and future, future strains, maintaining bench strength of healthy employees and employee fatigue. And in conclusion, I'd like to ask everyone to take a look at the back wall. A big thank you goes out to these men and women, our first responders who have been on the front lines through the unknown of the entire COVID-19 pandemic. open this up for some questions and from commissioners, um, but I think it is really fascinating for us as you walk through that to think about the iterations that we had to go through, going from completely unknown to where you start to see success in the process. Absolutely. Yes, sir. And we did. We, we recently just saw that again. We, we had 58 positive to date in 2021, which is a huge change. As I said, it almost doubled from 2020. So we were in a point of really the unknown going, where are we going with this when almost a third of, of our sworn employees were out uh, through the entirety? I believe our, our highest was 25 at one time. So about a sixth of our, our sworn guys were out at one single time. And, and it's also wise to have integrated some non-essential relief in terms of workload because it is fatigue. And, yes, it sir. Is, and there's a daily angst aspect to all sure. of this. Yes, sir. So we are very, very grateful for that. Uh, comments from commissioners. Commissioner Walker. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Mayor. And thank you for the presentation. Um, you know, it just go without saying how not only our fire department, but the police and EMS and all those that we call our first, uh, first responders, you know, had to deal with such a horrific situation even in, uh, up to now. Absolutely. When you think about it and, and how you had to manage uh, those situations, particularly when it comes to what service you have to provide yes, sir. to our citizens here in our city. So thank you for that and appreciate, you know, how you had to juggle, I'm sure, many particular tasks, many kind of things that may have to confront you to be able to take care of our citizens again in Lakeland. You know, and I think sometimes we just forget, you know, many of us because it's not in our front door or not things in our, in our, in our face that we have to share and, and be able to handle. But uh, thank you for handling it very well. Thank you, Chief Riley. Uh, and uh, let me just say also too, because uh, I, I know uh, Chief and uh, Chief Riley and myself and Chief Hazard have, have had some uh, lengthy discussions about some things. But I want to compliment you all for doing what you have done to support what I think is best for us as a city of inclusiveness. And you're doing that. I see efforts being made over the years, especially the last couple of years, to say you've done that, and, and I appreciate that. I think the citizens of Lakeland would appreciate that as well. So thank you. I would appreciate what thank you do. Thank you. Commissioner McLeod. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Chief Busby, for the presentation, and thank you all for what you do. Just we, we, uh, We're so grateful. That doesn't even capture it when you're hearing what you have done the past 
year and a half and and just the way you serve our city and and we are so grateful for that At, following along the mayor's comments about uh, employee fatigue and you mentioned chief busby the bench strength and so i just just curious if you could comment on how that bench strength is now as we head into october it seems like it's stronger maybe than what we were facing several months ago but i can't help but think that uh, just it's been a it's been a year and then some yeah. i'm not really sure chief um something you might want to speak on <laughs> I don't, or chief riley that's on yes sir so um what we're seeing and what we have been seeing is once we start having people that are exposed and then they have to be out for quarantine and testing and things like that and then the ones that are negative are able to come back but sometimes that's 10 10 days before we get them back as well as the positives that's creating because we have minimum main that's creating a lot of mandatory overtime so a lot of our people are working double shifts um, on a regular basis just to make sure that we maintain the minimum amount of people in seats to be able to provide that service so like uh, chief buzz we say kudos to the men and women that uh, that do it every day that are working those double shifts and are making sure that our citizens are being taken care of so obviously the less people that we have out for quarantine for testing for being treatment being treated the less impact that uh, mandatory have but it's been a lot yeah uh commissioner music yeah i would just like to say thank you again and 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 that that uh for all of the support and and work that you all do and and so often it's it is just behind the scenes right if we didn't if we didn't take this time to come up here um you know and listen to you all so so you know thank you and you know my goal is is as long as i sit behind here if something comes up that we can do to support you that's that is my goal and, and i know the rest of us as well so thank you yeah we realize the value when it's our emergency you know and that's <laughs> yes. often what happens commissioner mccarley and just to commend you on thanking all the other departments and recognizing them because it was a team effort yeah, i know yes. you guys are on the front lines and you're men and women but you know, Fred at the warehouse is amazing and the team for, you know, procurement and getting everything that you all needed. That was, you know, being on those weekly calls last year with the county and listening to the PPE needs and, and everything that other municipalities were struggling with, we stayed ahead of the curve and that's because it was such a team effort. So kudos to you all for that and for recognizing the support people who really helped out the fire department. Yeah, because there was a supply issue and then there was even the quality of what you're getting in that supply when everybody was scrambling so hard and it's easy to forget that and fred and team thank you so much for that other comments thank you very much uh, assistant chief williams thank you for all the work you do to make this happen as well Well, we, we now have another privilege, which is the Beautification Awards by our, one of our only 50-year employees currently working, um, and that's Bill Cohen, and so he will give an award for both the residential and commercial. It's amazing. How do I get to this folder? So I believe the residential award is going to be first up today. Uh, this award is going to be being presented to Lindsay and Glenda Dawson, who resign at 1725 uh sims place um i don't really see the picture up there right? i'm working on it i'm working on the picture <laughs> it builds suspense okay do this so anyway the the landscape actually um features large oak trees for shade um a beautiful bromeliad collection and also uh several different types of colorful shrubs so it's really a nice job it's perfectly maintained oh yeah i know that house it's very nice very nice property there you see how pretty it is and i believe there's someone here today to receive the award if they would like to step forward excellent okay i think we want to go i think they want us to go up on the stage to... <laughs> <laughs> And then if you could say a little something about what you've done, we'd love to hear that. Oh, my goodness. They said I didn't have to talk. <laughs> I didn't say that, but everybody else did. Okay. Well, thank you so much for this award. Um, it was quite a surprise. Um, I have always tried in every place we've ever lived to take care of the little 
piece of grand, ground that we had, the earth that we had, and make it prettier and better for the environment. So I really appreciate this. Thank you. Well, you have some beautiful trees, too. Oh, thank you. I didn't plant those trees. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not it can't be 25 and. Uh, <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Thank you. The commercial award is next, and it's going to Central Florida Kidney Care, located at 1745 Lake and Hills Boulevard. And obviously, this facility provides a much needed uh, um, service to our community. The building was recently renovated and beautifully landscaped. Everything meets the plan development regulations, new irrigation system, and it this really looks very nice out there. Um, I believe we have someone here to receive this award today, too. Uh, <laughs> uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, on behalf of Center for Florida Kidney Care, we received this award. Uh, we are very humble. We are very uh, proud, uh, not only for giving service to our patients in our community, serving our patients in Lakeland for the past 30 years, but also now giving and changing the experience and putting our city beautiful. So we are very excited, and thank you so much for the award. Thank, thank you. you. Um, I will work on doing the proclamations next. We have our uh, city manager, I just want to point out, is his birthday today. You may not have rec rec known that, but so one of the proclamations is that it's his birthday. And so we wish him a happy birthday. He's at the ICMA conference and will be there uh, this week. So he gets to celebrate his birthday in such a fun way. And, um, but he'll come back with good knowledge as a result of that. And so we have our deputy city manager, Nicole Travis, filling in for him today, who she does, and she does that so capably, and we're so grateful to have you here, ma'am. All right, so on proclamations. We have a few this morning uh, to go through. The first one is our certified public manager. Uh, here to receive that proclamation is Justin Troller, president of the Heart of Florida chapter of FSCPM, Kim Stopiak, our treasurer of Heart of Florida chapter of SSCPM, and Lori Smith, director of Heart of Florida chapter of FSCPM, and welcome, sir. It's nice to have you here. All right, so come on up and I will read the proclamation. You're making me put my mask on, so I'm going to go grab that because <laughs> I want to make sure we're equally protected. So the proclamation says, whereas the quality and efficiency of management in government has a major impact on the orderly functioning of services to society and the lives of the residents of our communities and whereas a public manager certification contributes to maintaining and improving the effectiveness and professionalism of government managers and whereas certified public managers participate in leadership, decision making, organizational research and management training while enhancing their knowledge of public policy and whereas through upholding public trust with high standards of ethical responsibility, certified public managers perform their duties with honesty and fairness while setting an example of professionalism 
And whereas certified public managers provide rational leadership, demonstrate vision and competence in the professional management of public policies and service, and whereas the City of Lakeland recognizes certified public managers for facilitating positive changes and enhancing the delivery of public services through improved communication and collaboration among public entities, and October's end, whereas on October 6, 1980, the Certified Public Manager Board ratified the Constitution of the National Certified Public Manager Consortium, which is designed to monitor accreditation standards and facilitate program development of certified public manager programs around the nation. I.H. William Mutz, Mayor of the City of Lakeland, do hereby proclaim October 2021 as Certified Public Manager Month and urge all citizens to honor the achievements and the contributions made by all certified public managers in our community. And this is an easy area to ignore and not take into consideration, and it's a critical area in terms of function. And so we thank you very much for that. Who's going to be the holder here? You, you determine that, and we'll take a picture. First off, it's nice to be back. It's nice to see so many familiar faces. Um, just want to talk about the CPM program. Um, I know if you're a CPM graduate in the, in the audience, raise your hands. Okay, so that's those are future members that we are going to ask for you to join our alumni association. Um, the CPM program is a program that the city uh, and the taxpayer sponsor by putting uh, employees through uh, a two-year program to learn best practices in public management. And uh, we finally have an alumni association that you're able to join once you graduate uh, the program so that you can continue uh, practicing CPM principles and the learning the best ways to continue to serve the public and so um, I would invite all of you uh, that are CPM graduates Polk County is one of the largest counties in the state for graduates between the city of Lakeland Winter Haven the BOCC the tax collector's office and the sheriff's office so um, we finally have a chapter Polk Highlands and Hardy County and we are being recognized this month uh, through other municipalities as well with proclamations and we're going to invite those CPM graduates to join our our alumni association um, for networking, camaraderie, and really to continue uh, to come up with best ways to serve the public. So with the hopefully mayor, with your help and, and your colleagues on the city commission, we can reach out to those CPM graduates um, that we've had over the years and invite them to become members. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that very much. Thank you. Our next um, proclamation is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and here to receive that proclamation is Kirsten Pinder, who is the Director of Victim Services of Peace River Center. Kirsten, come on, on up. And whomever else you'd like. Ileana, are you just taking pictures? All right. Whereas domestic violence undermines healthy relationships and preys upon the vulnerability of intimate relationships, and whereas Peace River serves as a primary victim service provider to provide safety and restoration, and whereas in just one day across the United States and its territories, nearly 75,000 victims of domestic violence sought services from domestic violence programs and shelters like Peace River Center, and whereas the impact of domestic violence is wide ranging, directly affecting individuals in society as a whole, here in this community and throughout the United States and the world, whereas racism, homophobia, transphobia, ageism, and discrimination based on physical ability, nationality, or other factors help to perpetuate domestic violence and make finding safety even more difficult for some victims, and whereas the need for safe housing continues to be rated as survivors' most urgent need, and whereas the City of Lakeland joins with others across Florida and the nation in supporting victims of domestic violence as well as local programs such as Peace River Center Victim Services who are committed to increasing public awareness and domestic violence and sending a clear message to abusers that domestic violence is not tolerated in Lakeland.
And whereas domestic violence impacts millions of people each year, but it can be prevented, preventing domestic violence requires the collective voice and the power of individuals, families, institutions, and systems to transform our communities. I, therefore, I truly must, Mayor of the City of Lakeland, do hereby proclaim October 21st as Domestic Violence Awareness Month in the City of Lakeland. And that is for your presentation. There you go. Thank you. And would you like to make any comments? Um, I just want to um, say how important it is to raise awareness for um, domestic violence. Um, this month is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Um, and we have um, shelters in both Lakeland and um, um, Sebring, thank you, <laughs> I just lost my train of thought. Um, and um, we have emergency crisis numbers that you can call, and we have outreach as well. So um, we provide a number of services for um, survivors of domestic violence. So um, please contact us anytime that um, you or someone you know is in need of services. Thank you so much. And Peace River does such a marvelous job. This is one aspect of what you do. And um, our community and county are so greatly benefited by your many locations. Thank you so much. Let's take a picture. Okay, next, for our big team that's remaining still here, is our Fire Prevention Week on October 4th. Uh, here to receive the uh, proclamation is Doug Riley and Cheryl Edwards, Fire Marshal, the City of Lakeland. So if they could come down, Chief, and, and anybody on this team that is here, please come down and just come across the front. And I will read from this newly installed podium. <laughs> Whereas the city of Lakeland is committed to ensuring the safety and security of all things living and visiting our city, and whereas fire is a serious public safety concern, both locally and nationally, and homes are the locations where people are great, at greatest risk from fire, and whereas home fires killed more than 2,770 people in the United States in 2019, according to the National Fire Protection Association, the NFPA, and fire departments in the United States who responded to 339,500 home fires last year. Whereas smoke alarms sense smoke well before you can and alert you to danger in the fire, uh, in the event of fire in which you may have as little as two minutes to escape safely. In my family's case, it also alerts you to a dinner that needs to be checked again in terms of how we're cooking. Um, and whereas Lakeland residents should be sure everyone in the home understands the sound of the alarms and knows how to respond. And whereas Lakeland residents who have planned and practiced a home fire escape plan are far more prepared and will therefore be more likely to survive a fire. And whereas Lakeland residents will make sure their smoke and CO alarms meet the needs of all family members, including those with sensory or physical disabilities. And whereas Lakeland first responders are dedicated to reducing the occurrence of home fires and home fire injuries through prevention and protection education. And whereas Lakeland residents are responsible to public education measures, are better able to take personal steps to increase their safety from fire, especially in their homes, and whereas the 2021 Fire Prevention Week theme, Learn the Sounds of Fire Safety, effectively served to remind us that how important it is to learn the different sounds of smoke and carbon monoxide alarms. I therefore declare, declare Fire Prevention Week for this week, October 3rd through the 9th, 2021, and urge everyone to be aware of the surroundings. Look for available ways out in the event of a fire or other emergency. Respond when the smoke alarm sounds by exiting the building immediately and to support the many public safety efforts and activities of the Lakeland Fire Department in the city of Lakeland. And who should I hand this proclamation to? You can hold it. Or 
Chief Hartzog, if you, you want to hold that in the center. Are there any comments you would like to make? Why not? And, and by the way, this is Cheryl Edwards, who is our chief inspector and does a fabulous job of protecting. And sometimes that feels like it hurts as a city in terms of some of the things that we have to do. But it is for that protection that she works. And so I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, just to reiterate what this year's theme was, um, it's about knowing the sound of your smoke alarm, but you're not going to hear it if it's not working. So encouraging everyone to have working smoke alarms in your home, they will increase your chances of surviving a fire by 50%, but also having that plan of what you're going to do if the smoke alarm sounds. So make a plan with everyone you live with, practice that plan at least twice a year. So that's our encouragement for Fire Prevention Week. Thank you very much. Let's take a picture. That is a wide angle lens. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's interesting as a practical application, I just visited a daughter in Atlanta whose uh, smoke alarm was sitting on the table with the battery out and I said, why, why do you have that like that? And she said, because it's chirping like every 15 minutes. <laughs> well, of course, that is the way they alarm us that the battery is going down and so that's to take it out, put a new battery in. And so sometimes even the automation of a device can cause us inadvertently to disable that device, and that's um, not the wisest thing for us to do. So sorry for that daughter for the public uh, <laughs> exposure of that vulnerability. Okay, next we have Hispanic Heritage Month, and uh, here to receive this proclamation is Ana Rivera, founder and pres president of the Puerto Rican Hispanic Chamber of Commerce of Polk County, and president of Women for LULAC Council 7269. Ana does such a great job of of representing with enthusiasm and vigor that council. So if you wouldn't mind coming up, ma'am, and, and I'll read this proclamation as well. We're halfway through the month, and I love your, your um, I gotta represent. <laughs> Whereas Hispanic Heritage Month begins each year on the 15th of September, celebrating the anniversary of the independence of five Latin American countries, which are Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, Mexico and Chile also celebrate their independence within this period. And whereas during National Hispanic Heritage Month, we recognize the contributions made by and the important presence of Hispanic Americans to the United States and celebrate their culture and influences on our society. And whereas since the earliest days of our republic, Hispanic Americans have written crucial chapters in our shared history. Hispanics have honorably defended our country in war and built prosperity during times of peace. And whereas Hispanics represent a vibrant and thriving part of our diverse nation and bring us lots of spicy salsa. Uh, their histories, it's, that's actually not in here, I apologize. Their, their histories and cultures stretch across centuries and continents and the contributions of those who continue to join our society in search of their dreams and continue to add new chapters to our national story. And whereas America has always drawn its strength from the contributions of a diverse people throughout our nation, Hispanics are advancing our economy, improving our community, and contributing to our country. And whereas during Hispanic Heritage Month, there is a renewed commitment to ensure our society remains one that uh, the talents and potential of all of its members can be fully realized, I therefore declare September 15th through October 15th as Hispanic Heritage Month in the city of Lakeland and invite the honoring of the rich heritage of the Hispanic community and celebration of its contributions. And here you go for that man and your comments. Well, thank you for having me this morning, Mayor. And um, just as you mentioned, we are going to be celebrating our 15th year this coming January. That says a lot for an organization that was told back in 2007, oh, what is that all about? Oh, we had one before. No, we have helped this city grow with this population, especially in business. If you know anything about the census, well, we have 21% of Hispanics in the city of Lakeland. And in the Polk County alone, it's almost 
matching the state. So we're at a 26%. We're no longer a minority, but we are a growing majority. And I will invite you all to visit all of our businesses, Zarza if you want Colombian food, uh, La Brasa if you want Puerto Rican food, if you want a great barber. So we have a wonderful potpourri of businesses that have helped grow this community. So I thank you for this and thank you for welcoming me back in 2002. Thank you. If anyone asks you about our chamber, we are about three things, and that is that has been our mantra. And we've gone through, I guess, four mayors since that. Well, they all knew the three C's. So if you take anything with you today, it's the three C's. Comunidad, cultura y comercio. Community, culture, and commerce. That's what we're all about. Thank you very much and bless you all. This next proclamation is one that um, deeply challenges my heart and uh, in which there's a little bittersweet as we take a, a look at this uh, because we're recognizing the Keystone Challenge Fund that is going to terminate December 31st, right, at the end of this year. Mm -hmm. And the work that has been done by it and Jeff Bagwell and team, and Jeff has led this so well. Um, Beth Niemeyer, who is the vice president, is with us as well, and Annie Gibson and Jeff's wife, Colette, are all gonna come up forward as we uh, do this presentation and anyone else that I may have missed, and I apologize. You're all coming up, yes. Emptying the row. Colette, come on. You've been a support person. <laughs> All right, and so it's really a privilege for us to, to honor you guys today in this entire process. Whereas Keystone Challenge Fund, here and after referred to as Keystone, was formed as a nonprofit Florida corporation in Lakeland in 1991 to maximize the delivery of affordable housing and help families realize the dream of home ownership. And whereas since 1991, Keystone has been an invaluable partner of the city of Lakeland, its community and economic development department, its affordable housing office, and community redevelopment agency. And whereas during that 30-year partnership, Keystone has been assisted more than 4,000 Polk County families, more than 4,000 Polk County families to become homeowners, over 950 of which were in the city of Lakeland. And whereas Keystone has since 1991 provided home buyer education classes and counseling to more than 25,000 Polk County residents, if you are providing classes to 25,000 people, you're doing it all the time in little batches, which is exactly what they have done so well, so consistently. Whereas in 1995, Keystone was qualified as a community housing development organization by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development and in the years since has developed over 190 single family homes for low income buyers. And whereas Keystone's principals, Jeff Bagwell and Beth Niemeyer have been experts in the financing of affordable housing, assisting local governments and public housing authorities in managing multiple federal and state affordable housing grant programs, which are very complicated. And whereas Jeff Bagwell's reputation and influence led to a gubernatorial appointment to the state's Affordable Housing Study Commission in 2008 and elected service as chair and vice chair of the Florida Housing Coalition. And whereas Keystone Challenge Fund has made an indelible impact on countless families and their quality of life. And whereas Keystone will close its doors on December 31st after more than 30 years of service to the people of Lakeland, Polk County, and the state of Florida. And whereas the city of Lakeland is proud of its long-standing partnership and success with Keystone, Jeff Bagwell, and Beth Niemeyer. Now therefore, I.H. William Must Mayor of the City of Lakeland do hereby proclaim October 4th as Keystone Challenge Fund Day. And in witness whereof, I have hereby added my hand and seal from the city of Lakeland and all our appreciative uh, citizens. There you go, sir. 
Awesome. Awesome. I will tell you, I met Jeff in 1996 and um, uh, was so impressed with his heart for people and his desire to create opportunity in, for lives and watch him do it one home at a time. And that is the consistent personality that you have provided along the way and Beth that you have supported as well. And I'm so grateful for that. So grateful for that. Mayor, thank you. You know, after hearing that, you, you, why should you say anything? But just thank you. Um, 31 years ago, the city gave us that opportunity. Um, we, Beth and I, started Keystone at the Coleman Bush Building. And uh, never will forget it. We were working with Mr. Bob Herring and Mr. Jim Verplank and all those folks. And they said, we have an office for you there. And we got there, and it was a seven by seven office. And Beth was on one side of the desk, and I was on the other. And um, we were there for uh, about three and a half, four months. And someone from downtown uh, decided, anytime anything goes wrong, we blame it on downtown, okay? <laughs> uh, we just, just say downtown decided that we would put flyers in all the electric bills. So we put flyers in the electric bills, and uh, after three months, we had over 4,000 phone calls. Uh, the next day, they decided it'd be best if Keystone moved. So uh, we moved to Dixieland, and Nissen, Niss and, you know, rented us a little office there. But we have been so blessed. Uh, we have to start by thanking the good Lord. Uh, God never gives you what you ask for. He gives you something better, and that's what happened with Keystone. I want to thank my wife, Colette. I promise she didn't have to come up, but it's Bill's fault. <laughs> and and uh, Colette just retired from Publix 40 years, and um, so I'm so proud of her. And and um, I, I wasn't going to write anything down, Mayor, because normally I don't use notes, but Colette reminds me that I started with very little and I got most of it left. Uh, <laughs> so I've decided to write it down, and, uh, but I want to start with Beth. Um, Beth's been with me from the beginning. Uh, she's been such a trooper, and she's my friend. Uh, and then we have um, uh, Karen Lloyd with her. Two of my staff couldn't be here today, um, but we appreciate all they've done. And then people like Annie Gibson. Uh, Annie's the salt of the earth. Annie's been my friend. We're just not colleagues. We're friends. Uh, but we started back with Mr. Bob Herrig uh, in the housing division uh, and Randy Walker, who was a local banker. People like Shane Gore, who's here today. Shane was a local banker. Uh, but Mr. Jim Verplank, uh, Jim Studio, our good friend Lynn Simpkins. Lynn opened so many doors. Uh, along with uh, Steve Bessonette, everybody knows Steve. Uh, so many good friends, Karen Collins. Um, uh, and then, of course, being able to work with people like my good friend, Brian Ruiz. Brian was not just the housing director, but Brian became a good friend. And anytime I had any issue, all I had to do was pick up the phone call, Brian. And to see some of the things that are going on in this city, what you've done with your CRA, the things, Nicole, y'all have done over at Lincoln Court, just does my heart uh, well. And um, you know, I built houses over there 30 years ago, a little two, a three bedroom, two bath for 49.9. And then you come in and put Lincoln Court and just turn it around and it's just, it's just gorgeous. Um, but you know, we've had great mayors. Of course, the best one is right next to me here. Uh, but you know, to have people like Buddy Fletcher and Howard Wiggs, uh, they were great mayors. They supported affordable housing. Our attorney's office, we had such great support. Our, our city clerk, uh, everything that we needed. All we had to say is we're Keystone. And I tell you, doors just opened for us. It was, it was amazing. Um, community leaders, Pastor Arthur Johnson. I just saw Pastor the other day. He's had some health issues, but he opened a lot of doors. He and Reggie Artis and Larry Mitchell. Uh, we started at the Coleman Bush Bill. Nobody knew who Keystone was. And uh, all they wanted was results. And in the first year, Beth and I, along with the city's help, put 99 families into homes. That's all it took that first year. Um, but there's just so many uh, people now, of course, with Annie and Teresa Mayo, their, their assistants. Uh, Annie's staff has been fantastic. Um, but in closing, I want to, I just found out today that Commissioner Music actually went through our program in 92, was it? 94. 94. He had hair back then, and I had brown hair, yeah. you know. And, uh, both lives. <laughs> both lives. Uh, but so many people we've helped. But I was teaching a class at Modell Elementary School right before the shutdown, and the young man came up to me. He said, Mr. Jeff, I wanted you to know uh, you put me in a house seven years ago. Well, I knew his face, but I didn't know his name. He said, but the most important thing I wanted to tell you is 17 years earlier, you put my parents in their first house. 
And man, it made me feel good. It made me feel old, but it also made me feel, <laughs> feel really good. And we've had several cases like that where we're helping the children now. But, but it started here. We would have never been able to branch out into the county nor to the city of Winter Haven uh, if it had not been for the city of Lakeland. So again, thank you so much for all your support. And uh, the new, a new group is coming to town. My good friend, Joe McReynolds, uh, and I, I tell everybody in about 90 days, you're going to say, Jeff who? Because uh, this lady is fabulous. they got a lot of great programs. You're going to be well served. But again, thank you for all you've done for us, City of Lakeland. We will never forget it. Thank you. And we thank you for that recap, because that recap reminds us of how important it is to remember we build on other people's shoulders like people are building on your shoulders today. And as we serve, that's just part, being part of that process. And you epitomize that. So thank you so much, Beth. Thank you so much, Jeff. We'll take a picture. That was fun and very rewarding. Um, we are, by the way, we are moving the Rhett Syndrome uh, Proclamation to next to our next meeting, which I didn't mention to you earlier, and that is because they were unable to attend uh, this morning, and that still is applicable to be able to do in October. All right, mm -hmm. National Red Ribbon Month, uh, we're gonna recognize next, and here to receive that proclamation is Cindy Sharp our Interact Alliance Executive Committee and the Community Services Unit Supervisor of Lakeland Police Department, Hans Steinbrenner, Interact Alliance Board Member and President Lakeland Magic, Carrie Ann Hall, Interact Alliance Board Member and School of Nursing and Health Sciences at Florida Southern and Interact Staff, Angie Ellison, Executive Director and Samantha McCain, Assistant Director. I think I got everybody in that, all right? So come on up and move across. Angie, great to see you today. Let me read the proclamation, please. Whereas substance abuse is the most common risk factor negatively impacting youth and society, and the prevention education program offered by Interact Alliance are proven to be effective tools in reducing risk factors and strengthening protective factors, and with recent research showing that 84% of Polk County res students in sixth through 12th grade choose not to drink alcohol. This, that's a repeater, that 84% of Polk County students in sixth through 12th grades choose not to drink alcohol and often are epitomized differently. Whereas Interact Alliance has been providing prevention education to youth and adults in the Polk, Hardy, and Highlands County communities since 1985, working diligently to reduce the abuse and underage use of harmful substances and risky behaviors through community awareness and involvement, prevention education, economic support, and leadership development. And whereas Interact Alliance serves as the fiscal agent for adult-based stand-up Polk and youth-based youth impact coalitions for a drug-free Polk and work in collaboration then with the county and local law enforcement to host the annual Own the Upside Prevention Summit, medication take-back events, and establish permanent prescription depositories to safely and properly dispose of unused medications. And whereas the 36th annual Red Ribbon Campaign will be highlighted, highlighted by the Red Ribbon Run and Challenge presented by Interact Alliance and the title sponsor, Public Supermarkets, will be uh, held on Saturday, October 16th, creating a community event in which elementary and middle school students participate in race heats and families can walk or run in a family run around picturesque Lake Mirror and participate in weekly online health challenges during October to support prevention education, anti-bullying, and encouraging family life choices. I, Mayor of the City of Lakeland, do hereby proclaim October 2021 as National Red Ribbon Month in the City of Lakeland and encourage citizens to wear a red ribbon to symbolize our commitment to healthy and safe environments for all to participate in events during the month of October and throughout the year that support a positive, healthy lifestyle. So let me give this to you, Angie, to hold. And any comments? I just wanted to thank the city of Lakeland. Without your support, again, just like 
um, the last folks that were up here, we couldn't do what we do. I would um, challenge all of you to look at the brochure that was given to you with uh, daily and weekly um, challenges, uh, health challenges, and you can post them on Facebook so you can be a part of encouraging kids to choose healthy um, choices instead of things that would possibly be risky to their health. And we hope that all of you will come out to the Red Ribbon Run, which is October 16th. And the very least thing you can do is wear a red ribbon during the month of October, specifically, especially the national week, the last week in October, to just let kids know, oh, I saw that at school. Oh, my mayor's wearing it. Oh, my minister's wearing it. Oh, my realtor. Um, just everywhere they see a red ribbon just lets them know that all of us are behind them in making those healthy choices that most of them make, um, but we erroneously think most of them don't. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I, I can't help but to notice there's red ribbons in your left hand. They've been passed around to the commission, but anyone that wants one? And our final proclamation is for Safe Sleep Awareness Month, which is also October. And here to receive that proclamation is Tracy McKinney, APRN of Lakeland Regional Health. And whoever's with her, that can come down as well, if you'd like. Thank you, Tracy. That's you, you can invite, you know, as you will, as you wish. Good job. We're, we're so grateful, by the way, for what Lakeland Regional Health has done in the last 18 months. My goodness gracious. What, what a wonderful community partner. Whereas sudden unexpected infant death syndrome, SIDS, is heartbreaking and can happen in family regardless of income, education, or community, and whereas SUID is one of the leading causes of death in infants, zero to 364 days, so in the first year, and is often associated with preventable, unsafe infant sleep practices and environments. And whereas research shows that a child's brain grows rapidly during safe sleep, whereas babies should always be put to sleep on their backs, alone in their own crib or bassinet, with no bumpers, pillows, quilts, comforters, or other soft surfaces in the crib, it just looks so cold, but it's so safe, okay? Whereas moms and dads should not share beds with their babies, and anyone under the influence of drugs, alcohol, or smoking should not be resting with a baby, and in the city of Lakeland. Whereas local and national agencies such as Children's Home Society, Florida Department of Health in Polk County, Healthy Start Coalition, Lakeland Regional Health, Safe Kids Suncoast Coalition, and their partnering agencies educate Polk County residents on safe sleep practices. And whereas the city of Lakeland recognized that infant unsafe sleeping is a public health issue in Lakeland and across the county, and together we can help by ensuring that any, that any person caring for a baby is using these safe sleep practices, I therefore, Mayor of the City of Lakeland, do hereby proclaim Safe Sleep Awareness Month in the City of Lakeland and have affixed my seal. Here you go for presentation and comments. Thank you, everyone, and we appreciate the City of Lakeland for taking this time to acknowledge something that is very much a community health priority. Annually, there are about 3,500 deaths related to unsafe sleep, primarily in the first year of life. And so uh, Lakeland and Polk County continue to be a high number in the state of Florida. And our coalition has continued to meet monthly and to put our heads together to try to come up with ways we can increase awareness and education for not just the mothers and fathers, but also grandmothers, uncles, aunts, and also siblings in the home. We know that unsafe sleep practices is a large cause of death in the first year of life. And so our goal is to increase awareness and continue to move forward so that no child has to experience an unsafe sleep related death. Thank you so much to the city of Lakeland for uh, creating the awareness and helping us to get the information out to our community.
We appreciate you. Thank you. to the business at hand. Uh, we are about, we have no committee reports and related items, and we have an, a consent agenda items noted by Asterix. Move approval. Motion to approve and a second by Commissioner McCarley. Discussion by commissioners. Any discussion by the audience or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same. Unanimously passes. That brings, there are no requests to appear from the general public. That brings us to equalization hearings and we will cease meeting as a commission and begin meeting as an equalization board and take a look at lots and clearing and we, for cleaning and clearing and um, city attorney Davis will present those. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The uh, city charter requires that the uh, city commission convene as an equalization board uh, prior to imposing a special assessment lien against private property. So this is the, the time in the agenda uh, when if you've received a notice uh, to appear this morning uh, related to the city either cutting or clearing your property and, and potentially imposing a lien against your property for the cost of that, this is your time to uh, address the city commission and express any objections or ask any questions you might have about the process. Uh, the properties that are, are subject to a, a special assessment lien are being scrolled on the overhead screen right now. Do we have anybody in the audience that wishes to address any of these specific properties? Uh, seeing none, is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. By second. Commissioner McLeod and a second by Commissioner Music. A discussion by commissioners. Any discussion from anyone in the audience? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same. Unanimously passes. Brings us to public hearings, ordinances, second reading. Uh, thank you again. Uh, we have three uh, ordinances for uh, public hearing and consideration of adoption this morning. Uh, the first is proposed ordinance number 21-040, an ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Lakeland, Florida, relating to community development districts, repealing ordinance 5758, dissolving the Hawthorne Mill North Community Development District, providing an effective date. Move approval. Second. A motion to approve and a second. A discussion by commissioners. Any discussion by any member of the audience? Seeing none, this is the roll call. Commissioner Walker? Aye. 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 Yes. Aye. Aye. Unanimously passes. Next is proposed ordinance number 21-041, an ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Lakeland, Florida, establishing a community development district to be known as the Hawthorne Mill North Community Development District, pursuant to Chapter 190 Florida Statutes, <coughs> naming the district, describing the external boundaries of the district, describing the functions and powers of the district, designating five persons to serve as the initial members of the district's uh, board of supervisors, providing a, a severability clause, providing an effective date. Motion to approve. So. Uh, Commissioner Music and a second by Commissioner Walker. Discussion by commissioners. It should be noted, by the way, that there was a lot of discussion on these yes. topics at our agenda study. <laughs> yes. So if you have any questions about some of the details, that can be referenced there. Any discussion by the audience? Seeing none, this is a roll call. Commissioner McClown? Aye. Yes. Aye. 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 Yes, that is unanimously passing. Next is proposed ordinance number 21-042, an ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Lakeland, Florida relating to the City of Lakeland Firefighters Retirement System, amending the City of Lakeland Firefighters defined benefit plan by amending section 27 supplemental benefit component for special benefits related to share accounts under chapter uh, 175 Florida statutes, providing for inclusion in the city code providing for severability, providing for the repeal of ordinances and resolutions in conflict herewith, providing an effective date. Move for approval. Motion okay. approved by Commissioner McCarley and a second by Commissioner McLeod. Discussion by commissioners. Any discussion by any members of the audience? This is a roll call vote. Commissioner Walker? Aye. 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 Yes. Aye. Aye. That unanimously passes as well. 
we have a, a number of ordinances for, for uh, first reading that are also require a public hearing. So the, these will need to be opened up for public comment, but uh, no action will be taken on these uh, uh, this morning. They will come back to you for final uh, action on October 18th. The first is proposed ordinance number 21-030, an ordinance relating to civil service, repealing certain ordinances, exempting officers and employees from the civil service system in order to provide for the consolidation of all such exemptions by resolution, providing an effective date. And uh, once again, no, no uh, motion or anything like that is required. We just need to open that up for uh, uh, public comment this morning. Are there any comments from the public? Next. Next is proposed ordinance number 21-043, an ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Lakeland, Florida, relating to the Land Development Code, amending Article 4 of the Land Development Code to adopt development standards for collection donation bins, allow for the use of shipping containers as, as accessory structures for certain commercial uses, and expand the parking exempt area within downtown Lakeland, making findings, finding conformity with the comprehensive plan, providing for severability, providing an effective date. Any discussion on this from anyone in the audience? Next. Next is proposed ordinance number 21-044, an ordinance relating to the Land Development Code, amending Article 9 and Article 13 of the Land Development, of the Land Development Code to address subdivision review and planning requirements, adopt standards for splitting lots and parcels, and allow for the development of non-conforming lots under certain conditions, making findings, finding conformity with the comprehensive plan, providing for severability, providing an effective date. Any comments on this one? None? Next. Next is proposed ordinance number 21-045, an ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Lakeland, Florida, relating to the Land Development Code, amending Article 2 and Article 5 of the Land Development Code to, to adopt uh, development standards allowing for the use of shipping containers as dwelling units in mobile home and multifamily zoning districts and as accessory structures for certain commercial uses, amending standards for home-based businesses in response to recent legislative changes, clarifying parking standards for boats, trailers, and RVs on residential property, Revising standards pertaining to personal wireless service facilities in limited, limited development districts, uh, zoning districts, making findings, finding conformity with the comprehensive plan, provided for severability, providing an effective date. Any comments? Commissioner McCarley. Did we, um, Teresa, did we get a picture of that? Did you email us and I missed it? But one of the examples of the RV piece. You had an exhibit. <clears throat> yes. Um, I looked back in the code and what we had was an exhibit that shows where a side yard setback is located, but Matthew Lyons is actually creating an exhibit that I'll bring back for second reading that'll clearly show the example that we were talking about with the corner lot and where you can place a RV or a mobile home and then where, you, where the issue has been with this kind of gray area right at the corner. So he's preparing that um, and we'll have that for you by the time this comes back. Okay. Thank you so much. I want to make sure I didn't miss it. Good. Good. By the way, as we're going through these, these are months and months and months of work that community development has worked with in planning and zoning. So we are very, very uh, grateful for this and these proposals. Any other questions by the audience on this? Next. Next is proposed ordinance number 21-046, uh, uh, an ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Lakeland, Florida relating to the Land Development Code, amending Article 5 of the Land <coughs> Development Code to revise development standards for new mobile home parks to allow smaller development site areas, uh, areas uh, smaller lot sizes, and greater density as a conditional use, allow for the use of shipping containers as dwelling units in new and existing mobile home parks as a conditional use, and allow for the use of tiny homes and recreational vehicle parks and spaces designated for recreational vehicles and existing mobile home parks, making findings, finding conformity with the conference plan, provided for severability, providing an effective date. Any comments or questions on this one? Next. Next is proposed ordinance number 21-047, an ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Lakeland, Florida, relating to the Land Development Code, amending Article 3 of the Land Development Code uh, to amend design standards for attached garages on single-family and two-family dwellings, making findings, finding conformity with the comprehensive plan, providing for severability, providing an effective date. Any comments on this one or questions? None. Next. Next, uh, and I believe this is the last one, uh, is, is. Uh, proposed ordinance number 21-048, an ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Lakeland, Florida, relating to the Land Development Code, amending Article 10 of the Land Development Code, to provide clarification regarding the concurrency determination process and adopt review requirements for major traffic studies, making findings, finding conformity where the conference of plan, provided for, sever for severability, providing an effective date. 
Any questions or comments on this one? Seeing none, thank you very much. We have now uh, items for a community redevelopment agency, and that brings us to our deputy city manager's report, 5A. All right, good morning. Good morning. We have two items for consideration for your consideration this morning. The first one being from Lakeland Lender International Airports, and these are contracts for the construction and oversight for the reconstruction of taxiway E and construction of taxiway S. Lakeland Linder International Airport is ready to proceed with the reconstruction of taxiway E and construction of taxiway S projects. You have a map attached uh, to this item. And they would also like to enter into a construction and engineering oversight contract to complete the work for both projects. The airport has received grants from the Federal Aviation Administration in the amount of $5,953,132 with 100% participation, as well as a grant from the Florida Department of Transportation in the amount of $450,000 at a 80% participation. Both grants will cover the design and construction of the project. RFQ 1006 for Architectural and Engineering Professional Services was issued in December 2020, and there were five respondents. The selection committee met on January 21, 2021 to rank the firms. Amherst Consulting Company, LLC, and Atkins North America, Inc. were both ranked as the top firms. Based on the rankings, Lakeland International Airport has awarded the design of, for the project to Amherst Consulting, LLC, and the Construction Administration Services to Atkins North America. The proposed engineering contract with Atkins to provide construction administration and oversight services is not to exceed $430,850. As a part of that process, the FAA requires an independent fee estimate be prepared as a part of the overall engineering contract and review process. Lakeland International Airport engage Cutchins and Grow LLC to prepare that review and estimated engineering services to be $410,017.08, which is within that 10% um, of that independent fee estimate and the estimate that was proposed. Atkins' proposal is within that acceptable amount and the, LA, the Lakeland Lender International Airport staff is requesting to move forward. Request for bids 1117 was issued for construction services March 2021 with five companies responding. The bids were reviewed by the airport staff and Amherst Consulting. It was determined that Hubbard Construction Company from Winter Park, Florida was the lowest, most responsive bidder. We did have a uh, response. We did have a bid response from CW Roberts Contracting, but it was deemed unresponsive and it failed to include the bid bond with their submittal. The construction contract with Hubbard Construction will be issued in the amount of $4,838,957.06. It is recommended that the City Commission authorize the appropriate city staff to enter a contract with Atkins North America Inc. in the amount not to exceed of $400. $30,850 to provide the construction administration for the oversight of the reconstruction of taxiway E and construction of taxiway S, subject to the approvals of FDOT and the FAA. It is also recommended that the City Commission authorize the appropriate city officials to enter a contract with Hubbard Construction Company in the amount of $4,838,957.06 to provide construction services for the project um, subject to the approvals of FDOT and FAA. And it is further re requested that the City Commission authorize an increase in the estimated revenues of $194,609, of which $37,235 is an FDOT grant revenues and $157,284 is from, in a, from the unappropriate surplus of the airport operating fund to accommodate this request. No additional appropriations are being requested at this time. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. And it's so moved and second. And discussion by commissioners. Questions, Commissioner Reed. Thank you. Uh, for the viewers that may be watching, can Jean, can you come forward and explain what we're gonna be doing at the airport, please, sir? So if we could bring up that. Um, can somebody bring up this video? Do we have any the slide? Or anything that we can put up there? 
because I think it'll help your explanation, sir. Perfect. Great. Good morning, Gene Conrad, airport director. Good morning. Uh, um, so what you're looking at here, this is obviously, this is a lot of work here on the southeast corner of the airport. Um, the blue portion is what we call Texaway Echo, or what our um, deputy city manager refers to as Texaway E. That's a joke. No, no joke. Yeah, it was okay. great. Um, <laughs> everybody missed that one. All right, sorry. You're echoing so, crickets. <laughs> so uh, Texaway Echo is in blue. Um, Texaway Sierra, which is a brand new taxiway for us as part of, part of our new master plan. Um, that is a north-south um, taxiway. And if you look to the right, that bend, that elbow that's in there, um, the majority of that's going to be demoed. We'll leave in the portion that's actually blue to service tenants that are there in that corner. Um, but the red portion will be demoed. And then you'll also see the yellow portion, um, the, the awkward portion that is kind of starts at the top and then co comes down. Um, that is our existing VOR access road. We will construct a new one, which is a straight line east-west. And then also um, a portion of our service wo road will, we will realign as well. So this will be a lot of work for us. Um, we're looking to get started as quickly as possible because as we talked about on Friday, we're always up against the gun um, with some fun in the fly-in. And um, this affects those areas if we were not able to complete that. But knock on wood, in my almost 12 years here, we have not failed. So we will not fail here either. Um, <laughs> so we will get that done. We're also going into the dry season. So that's a good thing. Yeah, it helps. Questions by commissioners. Uh, any others? Commissioner McLeod. That was going to be my question, Gene. What was the contingency if it did, if we rolled around to Sun and Fun and this was still going on, but you seem confident that it was, this, it that won't be happen. So we're, if we could yeah. get the runway done in 110 days um, and have that done prior to uh, what, unfortunately, we didn't have Sun and Fun in 2020, but this project will be done. And also our contractor, Hubbard Construction, did our runways, done several projects out there. So they understand the tempo with which we need to get things complete and be ready for other things and other events on the airport. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Music. Yes, sir. Do we have, thank you, do we have, um, if we look out over, the, like, say, the next the next decade, you know, next five to ten years, do we have something else major popping up that, that we're seeing? Or where does this put us in, in relation to, you know, the growth plan that we're seeing and the need for, you know, taxiway repairs and alterations? Well, we have been, you know, again, over my tenure, we have been very fortunate. Um, I believe we have done a large construction project every year that I've been here. Um, I, I see that slowing down a little bit um, just from the standpoint of we've almost totally reconstructed the airport at this point. Um, so there will be projects as, as we move forward. We Every five years, or we do our CPI, we, our five-year plan with the FAA and FDOT. We update it every year, but it's our five-year plan. So looking out 10 years, we kind of have an idea and some things that we're looking at, but we really focus on, on that first five years. Um, and the next big taxiway project we would do in, in our planning cycle is uh, to do taxiway alpha shoulders. So it's our taxiway on the north side of the airport um, that services all of our larger tenants. Um, so we would put shoulders on the taxiway, and then we'd also build what's called a run-up pad. Um, so aircraft that are waiting to take off or have delays going to other airports have a place to go. Because right now, for example, with Amazon, um, when they come in or there's a delay to Chicago O'Hare or Phoenix or wherever, they're having to sit on other taxiways on the north side of the airport waiting to depart. Or when they come early and there's no room on the ramp to get in either, this way, this way will have an area for them to move into what we would call the penalty box. Um, so they can have a place to sit and wait to get to where they need to go. A little parking lot. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Other questions? Any questions by the, from the audience? Uh, seeing none, this is a voice vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same. Unanimously passes. Thank you, sir. Item B. All righty. The next item that we have for your consideration is the ratification of a collective bargaining agreement with the UWUA uh, Local 604, representing bargaining unit employees in Lakeland Water Utilities. The Utility Workers Union of America was elected as the exclusive bargaining agent by Lakeland Water Utilities Unit employees in November 2010. The Lakeland Water Utilities Bargaining Unit includes roughly 36 classifications and approximately 135 employees. The most recent collective bargaining agreement expired on September 30, 2020. Negotiations for the successor CBA for the Lakeland Water Utilities Bargaining Units commenced in August of 2020. Despite extensive ex negotiations, the city filed for impasse in November 2020. And arbitration hearings with special magistrate 
occurred on April 13th and 14th, 2021. A recommendation was received from the special magistrate on August 16, 2021, and both parties complied with the continuation of the required impasse process over the next few weeks. A mutual decision was reached to schedule and conduct further negotiation sessions prior to a public hearing being scheduled to take the disputed issues before the city commission. Negotiate, negotiation teams for the city and the UWUA recently reached agreement on proposed terms and conditions for a successor three-year water utilities unit CBA, which has been ratified by the representative, respective unit employees on September 29, 2021. With the ratification of the agreement by represented bargaining unit employees, the CBA now awaits formal consideration from the Lakeland City Commission. The following provides a summary of the recently agreed upon major economic terms and conditions of each of the CBA. For the Lakeland Water Utilities Bargaining Unit, wages effective October 1, 2020, which is fiscal year 2021, 0% across the board increase for all active bargaining unit employees, 0% merit increase for active and eligible bargaining unit employees. Effective October 1, 2021 for fiscal year 2022, one and a half across the board increase for all active bargaining unit employees, up to two and a half percent merit increase for all active and eligible bargaining unit employees. Effective October 1, 2022, fiscal year 2023, one and a half percent across the board increase for all active bargaining unit employees, up to two and a half merit increase for all active and eligible bargaining unit employees. Terms of the agreement from the date of ratification through September 30th, 2023, an overall three year agreement. The city and the union agree that the city's counterproposal on Article 42 non-standard shift provisions dated September 17, 2021, provided that if the bargaining unit does not ratify this wage agreement, the phrase or more than one negative response in any consecutive eight hour period in the section of Article 42, excuse me, titled criteria for meeting response requirements as detailed in Article 42 will be deleted. The union withdraws its proposal and agrees to the city's proposals on the following. Article 36, health benefits, status quo. Article 40, survivor benefits, status quo. Article 42A, out of town assignments. Article 46, term of agreement, except that across the board and merit increases for the 2021-2022 fiscal year will be effective as of October 2021. The union withdraws its proposals on the following, Article 13, except that the parties agree to substitute business days for calendar days. Article 33, meals, no increase, and this is status quo. Article 43, premium, premium pay, no increase, status quo. The city and the union agree to implement the recommendations of Special Magistrate Michael Whelan regarding revisions of city policies. All other articles that were tentatively agreed upon have been incorporated into the final collective bargaining agreement. It is recommended that the city commission authorize the appropriate city officials to execute the respective proposed collective bargaining agreement with the Utility Workers Union of America, Local 604, representing bargaining unit employees in Lakeland Water Utilities, as described above. All right, is there a motion to approve? Move for approval. And a second? Second. Okay, right, Commissioner Madden. And so the um, discussion, Charlie Martin's president, if you have any specific questions, by the way, on this. Um, any discussion by commissioners? Commissioner Music. Yeah, I just wanna, as I was reading this prior to, and, and I'm, I'm always impressed um, with, with staff when I realize how long it takes to get from, from A to B on these things and, and the back and forth. So uh, as something that I've never been involved with, so I just wanna say kudos to the the group going back and forth and getting this taken care of for, for our folks out there. And the win in this is doing it mutually respectfully, which yeah. has been done along the way. Good job. Other comments by commissioners? Any by the public at all? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same. Unanimously passes, so we have that agreement in place. Just wanted to take job. a moment to thank the city team uh, for working diligently on this under the leadership of Charlie Martin. So thank you. This has been a long time coming. Thank you. Well, that brings us back to city attorney for um, ordinances first reading.
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We have uh, one ordinance for first reading. Uh, this will be read by title only today, and we'll come back for a public hearing on October 18th in consideration of adoption at that time. Uh, that is proposed ordinance number 21-049, an ordinance relating to zoning, making findings, approving a conditional use to allow for the demolition and reconstruction of a secondary school for grades six through eight on property located at 20, 2815 Eden Parkway, finding conformity with the conference plan, providing for severability, providing an effective date. Once again, that'll come back for a, a public hearing and consideration of adoption on October 18th. And we go to B resolutions, one. Our resolutions, we have one for adoption this morning. That is proposed resolution number 21-076, and a resolution relating to assessments, determining the necessity for having clean and cleared certain properties within the city of Lakeland, uh, providing for the assessment of liens against such property for expenses incurred in the cleaning and clearing thereof, providing an effective date. So this would be our equalization motion for, as a board earlier. Is there a motion to approve this? So moved. Second. And a second by Commissioner McCarley. Discussion by commissioners. And again, any discussion by the audience? Seeing none, roll call vote. Commissioner McLeod? Aye. Yes. Aye. 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 So unanimously passes. That brings, and C, item C2, uh, B2 was taken off, and item C1 was approved on consent. There is no report from our finance director that brings us to the utility section, and we have two items for approval under uh, I, Air, Article 8C1. The uh, first uh, contract for consideration this morning is an agreement with Mid-State Industrial Maintenance uh, LLC uh, for repairs to 14 silencer panels in the uh, exhaust duct of the combustion turbine at Larson Unit 8. Uh, these have become degraded over time, which is allowing insulation to fly into the gas path and become embedded in the heat recovery steam generator uh, fin tubes uh, of Unit 8, and that's reducing the efficiency of Unit 8 and also could have the uh, effect of, of greater damage if, if not repaired. Uh, so the uh, purchasing department issued an invitation to bid on February 18th of this year. Uh, asking for uh, bids for this repair work. We received three bids. Uh, Mid-state industrial, or actually pro-serve industrial contractors out of Sanford was the low bid at $201,875. However, Mid-state industrial maintenance out of Lakeland uh, was within 10% of this price uh, and pursuant to our local preference ordinance that then uh, 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 put them in first place. Uh, and staff evaluated their, their bid and found that they were, were both responsive and responsible bidders. And so the recommendation is to award this work to Mid-State Industrial out of Lakeland in the amount of $221,900. This work will be completed during the spring 2022 outage and is included in Lakeland Electric's FY22 budget. This was considered by the Utility Committee on Friday with a recommendation of approval to the City Commission. It's a motion to approve. Second. Commissioner Madden and a second, second. by Commissioner McCarley. Uh, discussion by Commissioners? Uh, Commissioner Madden. Thank you, Mayor. We had a lot of discussion on this on Friday as well. Uh, I almost feel like we've had our commission meeting because we were actually at the dais for our agenda study. Um, but this, I, I we wanted to bring this to attention because actually Mid-State early on when I was a commissioner um, had an opportunity to bid on several things and, and does work with uh, Lakeland Electric. Um, but one such time it was concluded that they were not capable of doing something that needed to be done they were considering the protest period um, and you know I actually went down to go and, and tour their facility knowing that they're just you know a stone's throw down down the road um, whereas oftentimes you know when you're dealing with folks outside the area it would be impossible to tour a facility to find out capability and through that process and through other discussions with my colleagues on the commission you know, we went, went about having workshops to, to find out how we could do a local vendor preference and had several conversations, worked with procurement, found out what other um, municipalities do with regard to a local vendor preference, knowing the pros and cons. And this is such a, a perfect example today um, with a local company with this one and then also the one that um, our city attorney will read next with regard to having an opportunity to have a, a company here in Lakeland who employs, I think, about 500 employees who live, work, and play uh, in Lakeland, or Lakeland Electric customers, um, who by you know $20,000, 10, you could think, well, doesn't the city want to save taxpayer dollars and have the lowest possible bid? What you'll find on the next bid is because they're local and we don't have to do per diems and such, 
that we're saving about a million dollars. So I think for $20,000 to be able to save a million dollars, this is just a perfect um, example today of what I'd love the citizens to see that last November we were able to actually finalize and sign a local vendor press preference and here it came into um, being back to back with these readings so it I would love you know for anyone to just kind of as soon as you don't even know we've been working hard on a local vendor preference or that um, we, we even make a difference uh, you know up here at the Commission and so to me it's just kind of exciting to have actual real live opportunities to share that Midstate, you know, a company who has done business with the city, um, won this local um, vendor preference, but to anyone who might think, why wouldn't we want the very lowest bid, when you think about these are customers of Lake Electric, their employees live, work, and play here, they contribute to our economy, and then also on the next one that um, City Attorney Davis will read, save us a million dollars, it's a pretty good, I think it was a pretty good um, example. Excellent recap, Commissioner Madden. Thank you for that. Any other comments by commissioners? Any by the audience? This is a voice vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same. Unanimously passes. As uh, Commissioner Madden indicated, the next item is also a contract with Mid-State Industrial Maintenance. Uh, this is for uh, uh, outage maintenance work associated with Macintosh Unit 5, as well as the MGT2 or Calpine Unit. Uh, these are, are all repair items. They're just the result of the, the high temperature environment that these uh, generators operate in, as well as uh, vibrations. Uh, the uh, uh, first component of this is, is repairs and replacement to Unit 5 uh, during the fall outage in November. Uh, Mid-State will uh, engage in replacement of, of, of a partial replacement of a bowler roof. Uh, replacing some seals also on that bowler roof, replacement of silencers, replacement of the combustion turbine roof's fire suppression damper and some other miscellaneous repairs associated with Unit 5. And then during the fall outage for MGT2, uh, they will pre uh, perform repairs of the interior exhaust duct lining that has been damaged during the past year of operation. Uh, the purchasing department issued an invitation to bid for this work on uh, on uh, August 11th and received three responses uh, to their to their invitation to bid. Mid State Industrial Maintenance uh, was the lowest responsive responsible bidder. They came in at $898,200. The next lowest bidder was uh, Trailer Industrial out of Evansville, Indiana, which was at $1,953,615. Uh, that $1 million differential did you know, cause further study uh, of, of the biz to make sure that there wasn't anything amiss. And what our staff determined was, uh, uh, one, that there, there was a, uh, uh, an interim bidder that came in at $1.2 million, but they did not submit a, a timely bid. Uh, two, there was a feeling that Mid-State understood the, uh, the, the, the scope of work a little better than the other two bidders. And then third, as Commissioner Madden alluded to, uh, Mid-State is able to save on the per, day, per diem labor costs by having their local, uh, their, their labor force to be local as opposed to having to come down and stay in hotels and that type of thing. So it was determined that uh, Mid-State's bid was a reasonable, reasonable bid. It is included in the FY22 Lake and Electric budget, it was considered at Friday's Utility Committee meeting and, and comes to you with a positive recommendation from the Utility Committee. It's recommended for your approval. This motion to approve Commissioner Music and okay. a second by Commissioner Walker. Discussion by commissioners. Commissioner Music. Yeah, I just want to, I do want to take a second just to echo what Commissioner Madden said. You know, I, I have uh, come in late on a lot of these things because they've been stuff that have been talking about forever, but I love the real world experience of we've had people sitting out in the audience who were local vendors and, and wanted, wanted us to fight for them. And the fact that, that we have, but yet economically it makes sense is, is just, is just wonderful. So. As a small business owner, knowing how difficult it is to go through these these uh, proposal requests and how thick they are, that not only do we have a qualified, um, top-notch group that can handle this and has handled it, but but they're local. They're keeping the money. We're keeping the money here, and they use our services. So I think it's a it's a win-win. So thank you. And it's a real million dollars right. taxpayer <laughs> savings. Right. Exactly. You know, excellent comment, sir. <laughs> Any other comments? Any from the audience? All, and the, if you don't vote in favor of this one, this could be bad. All those in favor <laughs> signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Unanimous.
monthly passes and we're very grateful uh, for that. That brings us to the end of our business and now we are to open audience comments and if there's an audience member here uh, that would like to make a comment, you have up to five minutes to do so. Is there anybody in the audience? Yes, please come up to the podium, state your name and uh, we will listen intently. Okay, okay. Good morning, Mr. Mayor, uh, City Commissioners. Uh, I am Larry Kalick, uh, and for the last 17 years, I have lived at 2012 Winterset Drive, South Lakeland. When my wife and I first moved to Lakeland, our main access was a quiet two-lane Lakeland Highlands Road. With progress, Lakeland Highlands Road became a very busy and noisy four-lane highway and drag strip. As a citizen of Lakeland, I can understand progress, but what I can't understand is the noise pollution created by very loud air shattering music from new age boom boxes in cars and trucks. Got to find my place here. Okay. On our city road. First, it is a very safety hazard for drivers uh, hearing emergency vehicles and residents of our community. 24-7, uh, this noise pollution exists. Radio so, so loud it vibrates windows in our cars and home, not to mention what it is doing to our environment. I was told there aren't laws on this new uh, noise pollution, but yes, we do have laws against this noise pollution to protect our citizens of Lakeland. Uh, I've been told some say lawbreakers have rights. I say we have rights too. Please help the citizens of our, our wonderful city to enjoy our lives. And remember that Lakeland's motto, a great place to live. I need your help on this. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that very much. Any questions at all? Uh, Commissioner Madden. Yes, um, so this is something actually I've heard from residents who live off of Harden Boulevard and also from um, folks who live, you know, downtown. And I did check, I think it was um, Assistant Chief Sam Taylor who said that there is a $111 fine. Mm -hmm. I know it's also difficult to cite folks, you know, they're going by so fast to take a picture or to get their license to be able to, you know, report that is something that is difficult as well. So I would, I would ask um, that my colleagues consider since we've had some complaints to either have a, a policy workshop or have some kind of discussion on how we could work as a community because we're gonna have more and more growth and more and more traffic. Certainly we're working on mitigating traffic, but as we mitigate that as thinking in terms of if we had signage um, that reminded folks that in Lakeland we are concerned about noise pollution, things like that. Um, it would be interesting to see what mitigation strategies we might have, knowing that there's a law on the books, but it's problematic in how we um, are able to get, you know, that the offenders, you know, the ticket. It, it seems to be the kind of breakdown of having the law, if I'm correct. I so I appreciate you coming because this is something I've heard as well. And I would look to um, the mayor and my colleagues to see if maybe we could have a, a conversation on this. Thank you. Commissioner Music. Yeah, and thank you for coming. I think I had reached back out to you and asked you to, to come to this meeting because we get, you know, a handful of emails, right? But, but to actually have you come and, and speak, I, I appreciate that for sure. I would be curious to, to take that from an from a information standpoint, take it one step farther and see in the last, when, when was the last time we ever penalized, fined anybody? for for this issue um i live off of beacon right off of lake hollingsworth and i swear my wife and i are sitting there and it sounds like a drag strip so i you know i i you know we'll, we'll get we'll get calls every now and then about maybe some airplane noise and stuff like that but i'm telling you these things are are Pretty. you know it's just bad I, like i said i i it's it's like we're in the uh fast and the furious movie sometimes right i mean these things yeah, are just it's, everywhere so it's, it's i getting out of hand it is and, and i and i appreciate um commissioner madden it's, it's one of those things that actually getting getting to someone as they're passing by where there happens to be a police officer the logistics of it are just what i keep wrapping my head around since you and i um talked about this so i would be curious to ask our police their thoughts 
um, if we can if we can get them to to address that. And has have we ever penalized or fined anybody for loud noise while they're driving? I would just be curious. Commissioner McLeod. Similar thoughts as Commissioner Music. Just I was scanning the room um, when the gentleman was talking to see if we had a chief here to uh, just speak to the process when we do get uh, a number of complaints on a particular street. How do we address that it, or, and what does that look like? So would certainly support further discussion and if it's a policy workshop or just to know uh, because it sounds like it's not just Lakeland Highlands with Beacon. There are other places where at times uh, there are pockets of uh, noise increases and so how do we handle that? Yeah, I, I hear them at my house from the parkway. Uh, uh, Commissioner Walker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, uh, thank you for coming and sharing. And, but I can say I know we have had incidents and have had enforcement because I know this happened in some other parts of our city where neighborhood groups have reported it. Thankfully, you know, I, and I thank God that we do have an active, very active, and you all know that, neighborhood group associations that come together, meet regularly as they do, of course, through the past 18 months or so now, it's been kind of challenging for them to meet. But I know we've had place, uh, neighborhood groups that will report and talk about certain streets, certain areas, as you're mentioning, sir, uh, in, our, in our community or in our city, Lakeland community, where we've had some problems with that kind of situation and enforcement have been done. Mm -hmm. So I know it can happen. I know because I've been witness to it over the years. Certainly I appreciate the conversation that we can have to see what more can be done, unfortunately, and picking back on what you just said, Commissioner McLeod, not having a, a city rep a police representative here today, we would have maybe heard. But I do know that it can be done, and it has been done in the past. Yes, so certainly we can make sure that we can reach out and see what more can be done to support other areas, because I do know it. we've had it in the past. Uh, let me just say our, our police department is one of the finest out mm -hmm. there. Um, when you need them, they're there. I have gone to the chief, talked to him. Um, they were understaffed right now, understandable. And uh, but the section that I'm talking about, they never get officers out there to help us. Uh, they'll do it down further near Edgewood. Uh, they'll do some of the side streets, but uh, it, it's hard for them to patrol mm -hmm. right in that Lakeland mm -hmm. Highlands section between the Parkway and Lake Miriam. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's just noisy, um, disruptive to the citizens, and it's a safety hazard. Sure. Uh, sure. It, it, I can understand the planes flying over. Hey, it's progress. Uh, they don't bother me. But what, when these trucks in the middle of the night, I mean, I just spent $4,000 to get a new sliding glass door put in and more for windows mm -hmm. to help with the sound deadening. It did help some, but <laughs> they still rattle mm -hmm. uh, when the, some of these trucks and cars come by. And it's amazing how somebody could drive that and not Mm -hmm. blow their brains out mm -hmm. with this music. Yes. And I'm not an old fart. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I appreciate good music. I drive a 57 Chevy. It's a little noisy, but not that look noisy. Um, but whatever you could do, I really appreciate sure. you guys. And thank you. Thank sure. you. Thank appreciate you. your coming in. Sure. sure. Um, yes. I'll definitely get with the... Uh, um, Chief Garcia to get some of the data that you're requesting and also um, to follow up on what information we could pull together and if it's enough information for the length of a workshop or to piggyback on an agenda study, we'll definitely get that to you. So I'll start working on that. Thank you. And just maybe even a communications campaign on, you know, that there it, there is a law on the books and that there is mm -hmm. there are ramifications because sometimes it's just on education, I think, and, you know, maybe they don't know that they're I mean, I would think they would know. And I've been on South Florida uh, next to people at a stoplight thinking, my head's about to explode, and it's two cars behind me. You so, can't even tell. You, you, you know it's behind you. It's not the car behind it's you. It's not the car behind no. you. So right. I think maybe just educationally that would be good, too. We'll work on that. Thank and you. I have something back for you. Thank you. All right. Very good. Thank you for that. Any other comments from anyone in the audience? All right. Seeing none others, um, this is a time for the mayor's 
and members of the commission to weigh in on anything they'd like to share. Commissioner McLeod. Sure, I didn't. <laughs> Commissioner Walker beat me to I'm it. Gonna yeah, we're I'm just going to go this way. way. Yeah. He, he called <laughs> your name <laughs> first, so you go. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Talking about local vendor preference, uh, a couple of weeks ago, Commissioner Madden and I listened into a a virtual session with our purchasing department and Bridge Local and local entrepreneurs and small business owners on uh, the topic of doing business with the city of Lakeland. And I really just wanted to commend Mark Rayford and the purchasing department. And I think it was a, a good start for a topic like this. I know the city, we have done these types of workshops here at the city, but I think it was great to partner with a local business organization. And you had people on the call who just starting out, how, how do I register as a vendor with the city and it was helpful information had a good conversation with Joyce uh, after that meeting and just talking about the potential to do more of these types of sessions in the community and take that message to places where people might not come to the city uh, looking for it or come to a workshop here and so I just encouraged her to continue uh, that effort and to partner with groups like Bridge or others in the community and, and certainly appreciate that and hope to see more of that in the future. Great, wonderful. Commissioner Mann. Okay, thank you. Yes, I thought that was great. It, and um, Mark Rayford seemed to be so friendly and excited, I think, to, you know, have conversations, you know, with the public and make it as easy as possible, you know, going forward to do business with the city. Um, I had a couple of things. Um, the first one is uh, I know that, like I mentioned with the agenda study on Friday, we had another riveting and exciting meeting um, after that in our utility committee meeting and I don't know if that's up yet but I I would encourage everyone who cares about the future of energy to watch that with Scott Bishop who presented um, from a Lakeland Electric um, perspective of what's coming down the bike up from the federal government you know with regard to potential mandates going towards a cleaner energy infrastructure but also just you know where certain technologies are um, the limitations of some, you know, in Florida, our only net zero producing energy electric is solar, and with solar you need batteries, and you need something to augment during times when it's cloudy or raining, and, you know, they have a, showed a good chart of, you know, solar only producing about 25% capacity of what you need, so solar is not by itself 100% um, you know, reliable. And so we, we certainly want to go into the next century. We've provided affordable, uh, reliable electricity for 100 years for our citizens and given a dividend back. And we want to make sure that we have the capacity and the best technology in a fiscally responsible way going forward into the next century to continue to do that. Um, but they, we had a good discussion. We had a great presentation. Um, we're getting some fun things like some floating solar arrays. OUC already has some in Orlando that I've been to see. Um, you can, can, they're actually getting an electrolyzer to connect with their floating solar array to make green hydrogen. And green hydrogen has a lot of potential, and you know how it is, supply and demand. If you get enough demand for it, that brings the price down. And that not only would solve our energy grid, you know, with pairing with solar to get more of a 24-7 um, electric energy source for production side, but also would go into fuel cells and mid and heavy load trucks to be able to solve the problems in transportation as well. So there's a lot of exciting things on the horizon. We have a great team here at Lakeland Electric working on these and making sure that making good, wise choices um, for our citizens, those six rice engines that are coming are, are only the beginning of what we're doing because they'll have natural gas, which is inexpensive and has been what's given us energy independence, um, but also injectable of up to 20% green hydrogen day one and up to 100%, you know, as we meet these uh, zero carbon goals. So really exciting. Anyone who is interested in the topic, I know we have citizens a lot asking about, you know, putting solar panels on their house versus um, community solar um, and where we're going and how we're reducing our carbon um, uh, emissions. And uh, if you're paying attention at the national level, um, certainly we're looking at that as well. You know how it is with government. We just talked about having a local vendor preference. You have the best um, hopes and dreams in your legislation, but it's always good to have as many people at the table as possible so you're not blindsided. 
So adding 4% solar every year for the next 10 years is what's being proposed. If you do it, you get a bonus. If you don't do it, you are penalized. Um, the problem with that is, you know, there might, you know, be a lag time between now and when we have the best possible battery storage or what we could do to augment solar um, in Florida since we don't have wind and um, hydro and some of the other net zero producing uh, energy sources in our state. So it's important to keep our eyes on what's coming from a national perspective, um, certainly from mandates and unfunded mandates. They do have federal dollars um, for pilot programs and for folks who are um, investing in a cleaner energy. Um, but it's really, I just think that you should be um, aware that these conversations are going on behind the scenes at Lakeland Electric, that we want to, as Joel Ivey says, be the best public power utility in the country. And to do that, we certainly have to be putting our best um, science and technology and math <laughs> uh, to make it all work to continue to provide um, a great service for our community. So that, go ahead and look that up if you're interested in more information, the utility meeting um, from last Friday. Secondly, um, had a great opportunity Friday night to see the premiere of a movie. I'm looking at our mayor. He was um, uh, he featured talking about our city a lot throughout the, um, the film. And it mostly was talking about historic homes, pa Paige Wagner homes. She's a realtor in town and couldn't do her normal historic uh, home tour because of COVID. And so, of course, I love that she got uh, creative and got a film team together, uh, Connor O'Brien and um, uh, Tim Rice. I was going to say uh, Tim Campbell. <laughs> Campbell Rice. <laughs> Campbell Rice. Um, Campbell Rice and um, then her husband, Chase Wagner, who is in charge of creative at his church, Grace City. So just this great creative team came together to showcase people who live in our town. And it was so great to see Commissioner Walker um, talking about living here during segregation and just uh, just powerful testimony of where we've come as a community and seeing that these historic homes tell that story. And to, to mow down all of your historic homes, you leave a sense of those chapters of our story. And that, you know, there's places that are beautiful in our history and there's places where we're, we've improved and made better in our history. And it was just a great, it was kind of nostalgic, but it was um, future focused and it was a beautiful film. And I can't wait to see where it goes next. I know they've submitted it for um, some of the film festivals, but it was really exciting to be there and to be a part of that. And then at the end, they had folks sitting in the couch and it was just family after family, person after person who's moved here from outside the country, from the West Coast, from all places, and how they decided to make Lakeland their home. So it really was um, an exciting and beautiful thing to be uh, a part of on a Friday place, night. A place called home. Yes. Uh, the people who live there. The people I'm who sorry, live there. Yes. Sorry. The, the people, people who, who live, live there. there. Yes. yes. And the film team's <laughs> even kind of thinking about maybe going to other places and talking to the people who live there. So it kind of keeps that open-ended. Um, and then the, the last thing is I know that um, uh, Assistant uh, Manager Emily Cologne is also, you know, kind of uh, now in a new role with innovation. And I'm excited to kind of see, you know, what she's dabbling in behind the scenes with regard to innovation. She's with um, our city manager at a city manager conference right now. Hopefully they'll get some great um, information. But one of the things that I keep thinking about with regard to like smart city operations or going forward, you know, just like we heard the noise pollution, we keep hearing about traffic as probably one of the number one concerns as we see the trajectory of growth that we're going to have in the next few years. And uh, so I would just love to just put it out there um, with my colleagues to really consider some kind of um, traffic modeling technology, uh, not just so that our you know wonderful you know traffic ops team or that you know Chuck Barnby and his team can can have that for them. I just think it would be really important um, going forward, even like when we think about the road diet. There's, you know, I always say it's like a, being in a kitchen remodel. You know, you're in the middle of it, but you never were shown the picture of what it's going to look like at the end. So you're more frustrated, even if you, if you, without a vision, you know, the people perish. And so, 
I think that if we had some kind of, uh, there's a lot of cool technology out there that shows like even as you see high rises erected in your city or different you know, grids of your downtown and as things grow um, and as the traffic is modeled, if this building went there, this is how the traffic would increase on these roads. Um, I just think it would be kind of a powerful tool, you know, for us to not just use going forward and doing traffic stuff. Um, in those roads that are affected by growth, when, when buildings do arise, like the Summit Building, it would give them a way to see, you know, okay, because I've told a lot of people, do you know that we do traffic studies when we say yes to these new uh, residential plan, you, you know, we, we, have, we go through that process and they're surprised and, and I think it gives them some calm and, and, and some hope that, you know, maybe their greatest fear, you know, is allayed because they can actually see that we are studying these things, but how know them through the infographics and through the um, technology. So I wanted to bring that up to see um, if there would be something that Emily could check into or with regard to kind of modeling that going forward with our growth. I'll pass that information on to Emily and we could work with um, Chuck and the traffic ops uh, to see what what resources are out there, mm -hmm. what, what we have access to already, and if there's anything for us to do regarding that. We'll follow up, definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Kid from Carly. This wasn't part of mine, but just to let you know, there's an entrepreneur at Catapult right now who has a drone business who's helping our traffic department hover and see pathways, especially on Beacon and Harden and different areas. So I know that the traffic ops team is really working diligently and they're always looking for cutting edge support mechanisms to help them do their job better. And they do a great job now, but obviously as technology evolves, it would be really helpful. So I think that's a great ad. Um, just a couple quick things. We, I want to recognize um, Ada Drake, a young person in our neighborhood who had created a Beacon Hill newspaper and has been producing that and sharing it with all of our neighbors. And um, as she's been doing that, her, she and I ran into her mom one day and I said, you know, we have a neighborhood association uh, group and that there's might be grants, you know, to, to apply for so that you don't have to pay for the printing because she was printing on her own and then she had to start charging. So Jonathan Rodriguez came out last week to our neighborhood and we are reestablishing the neighborhood that I live in. Um, and so we had had an association several years ago. It kind of went defunct and then we're going to circle back. So Jonathan did a great job. Um, we, it was a really nice evening. We did it right at sunset and we're sitting outside and it was not humid and there weren't that many mosquitoes, so it was lovely. And the Drakes have been really wonderful at encouraging their child to do this and, um, and also supporting the mechanism of saying, stepping up to the plate and saying, we'll be part of the leadership team to put this neighborhood association back together. So although I talked about this in January of 2020, which no one remembers now, um, <laughs> because it seems like a lifetime ago, neighborhoods are a critical component of our community. And I think the engagement that happens on that village type level is really important to take care of one another. Um, also understand what each person in our neighborhood's doing and how we can support one another um, beyond a pandemic, but just in the future and, and making sure that backbone exists. So I'm excited about that. I wanted to commend the Drakes uh, for doing that. And then just as a side note that doesn't need an answer, but I'm going to ask um, Ms. Travis to take a note. Our sidewalks in our neighborhood, I had a neighbor stop me the other day, are ground at some of the cracks in the sidewalks and they're going around and grinding and one of my neighbors wasn't happy about that. But um, if you could just shoot me an email as why we're doing that, that'd be awesome. Um, and then last, uh, I attended first Friday. Um, which is the first time I've been back there in a while and it was a lot of people mm -hmm. and it was really exciting so I wanted to commend LDDA on um, all their good work in the community. Julie's presentation last commission meeting was really good for the Lakeland Downtown Development Authority. Um, the event I think was really well in attended. I'm looking at Commissioner Music because he popped by my booth a couple times and we got to visit with one another um, and I think it was really um, it was just really a fun night while well, everyone was at Polk Theater and then some people from Polk Theater came over after that movie and they were telling us about the movie as well. So it was a really great night for Lakeland. Um, I do want to say too that we, you know, now that some of us are on the campaign trail, we hear a lot of, um, a lot of polarization on both sides um, of the gamut politically and when you're running for office you get to entertain a lot of those questions and, and talk to people. And what I'd like to say is there, 
um, what I tried to say to several people on Friday night is there is great hope. We're coming out hopefully of the pandemic or we're learning at least how to mitigate it. And um, a lot of issues that are really beyond the scope of Lakeland stress people out. I think Lakeland does a really good job locally and that's what I always try to bring people back to is okay, well, I'm very upset about the national dialogue on different topics, but I'm really more excited to make sure your garbage is picked up as a city commissioner, because I think local is the best piece of serving others. And so um, I just want to set, I hope everyone keeps their chin up. I had some really positive conversations the other evening, but I do feel like there's a tension in our community that is not so much about us in Lakeland, that it's really beyond Lakeland. And so the more we can be good neighbors to one another and care about one another, and even be positive um, in our roles as commissioners, which I feel like all of my colleagues are, is really important just to help people you know, have hope and, and be positive and be supportive of one another because it's really, you know, I can bring along, you know, my people and um, who are local a lot easier than I can bring along people on a national, federal, even a statewide level. So I just want to commend Lakeland, City of Lakeland, all of our staff does a great job and um, all of our commission and I'm just really uh, honored to serve within this realm. But there's hope. Let's there's a lot, more. a lot of good. I feel like we should have music playing right now. Yeah. <laughs> Commissioner Music. Um, oh, no, that's just, music playing right yeah, there. Yeah. I just want to second. All in favor? I mean, it was uh, that's 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 excellent, right? I mean, it's it was it was interesting because what I am finding, having felt like I've been running for the last six months, um, has been that we can't do everything, right? So um, I had tickets to go to the Polk Theater. And my wife, uh, my daughter called and said, hey, can you come up and see me this weekend? It's parents weekend and my kids never want us to come to those things. So, <laughs> so my wife uh, flew up and, and so I missed her all weekend. So my son called up and said, hey, my girlfriend and I would like to go to the thing, but there's no tickets. Can I have yours? <laughs> okay. So, so I gave that up, but then I did get to go to the, you know, to the first Friday, which is, which is always excellent because that is truly um, a, a, Popery of, of individuals that that go down there. So um, it, it is nice to be out there, but I am certainly finding, as you guys have known, that have done this longer than I, as you you can't be more than one place at one time. And to be effective, I you know. Um, so anyway, I, I do second that. I, I have really enjoyed um, you know getting to getting to know the commissioners. So I look forward to getting November second uh, one and behind me. So thank you. Commissioner Walker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I'd like to echo again what has already been mentioned by my colleague, uh, uh, Commissioner Madden, about the movie, the people who live there. Um, very nicely done. And I think it was, you know, captured the essence of what Commissioner McCollin just said, what Lakeland is all about. You know, and, and I tell folk all the time, as I share, as I have been in these past number of years, you know, don't, well, I think many times you just mentioned uh, Commissioner McCauley, try to you know pay plate what's going on on a national level with local. It's just not fair. I, I, don't, I try not to use the word fair. I try to use the word right, because I think right is the, is a better word to use. What we do here in our city and what we have have done to show others even how well we do manage and work well together as we play in this sand together. So I think that's a good comment you made, Sis, because we tend to always want to look at what media has said, how media pulls out and polarize everything, but we don't have those kind of things. I don't see it. Maybe I'm in a closet by myself. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm around, and I think we do very well to support each other and, and, and make sure that they can become what we want it to be, a better place for all of us to live. And we work toward that. But on another note, I want to thank, of course, the Gain Task Force and uh, Dream Center with Pastor Mike Cooper, LPD, and the other uh, public works, uh, the other departments that come along, uh, code enforcement and all, that made the last, what we call, neighborhood, um, neighborhood outreach, uh, another successful one. Uh, of course, they were back in the neighborhood, of what we call the North Lake Wire uh, area, with um, uh, the, uh, the church next door. Uh, all Saints was, have almost just married that particular neighborhood. And you can really see a difference in what has happened with uh, the different partnerships that have come along with 
uh, Pastor Mike and Dream Center and uh, different uh, ministries have uh, aligned themselves with different particular uh, neighborhoods. It's so, so important, I think, to have that done and, and it's been a very good model. And he's taking that model, of course, outside of, of Lakeland, Polk County, to other areas as well. So um, kudos again to those that came out for that last meeting or the last um, cleanup meeting. We'll be having our next um, Gain Task Force meeting next Monday. Uh, help me, correct me, uh, Ms. Kelly, if I'm wrong, but I think it's 5 o'clock p.m. next Monday. Um, when, when we started out, you all know, we, we had a very challenging situation in Lakeland back in 2013-14. And, we, you know, the Gain Task Force Committee was, um, it became, Bert was birthed and, and, and has been very well, I think, supported by uh, not only uh, the city uh, itself, or city meaning citizens, citizens of our city overall, but um, making sure that we could do what we can to support what was going on. And uh, our police department, you know, and others made sure that we did just that. But we, our crime rate is down, you know. And of course, we do not want to take that fingers off the pulse, but you certainly, we, you know, we want to trust God that what we did and how we did help make, you know, what is today a better situation. So when we meet uh, here next Monday, we will have to decide, you know, um, what, what's next, how best we can do some things next, you know, as opposed to um, just continue to do what we've done, of course, has been successful these last uh, few years. So we want to make sure you know that and, and we'll report back to you all where we think we may be heading next. Um, I was glad, it was encouraging to hear at the, um, Jeff, of course, uh, leaving, Key retiring with Keystone uh, uh, Challenge and where we're going to be held. Uh, my first day came to my mind, who's our successor? Who's our successor? What's, what's going to happen? You know, now you all, but glad to hear him announce, you know, the successor, the one who will be working with that. So, Mr. Ruiz, I'm, I'm encouraged not to have to call you about that because I was going to call and say, okay, who, what's next? Who's going to replace Keystone Challenge and helping us out with affordable homes and housing and that kind of thing? So I was glad to hear that, that, that he announced uh, where we were moving next in that regard. Um, lastly, uh, next commission meeting is week of city government week. So I've asked uh, our city manager and, of course, speaking with both uh, city manager, Sean Rouse, and deputy city manager, Nicole Travis about what we can do other than just a proclamation. I know the last couple of years or so, that's all we've done, Mr. Mayor. And that's what, of course, uh, the Florida League of Cities have asked, you know, different cities are to, to showcase something, what you've done and what we're doing. And I think Lakeland has much to showcase. And I'm thankful for that, of course. So we'll, we'll do a proclamation. I know you'll do that, Mr. Mayor, so thank you. But I also would think it'd be good to sh showcase some things as to what we've all about here in our city called Lakeland. And what ideas and in what format and to present to whom? Well, I've shared that with um, uh, city, Ma city manager Shiraz that, you know, in presenting the proclamation as the legal cities have asked us to do, but whatever, you know, kind of projects you may be doing or kind of, uh, that's kind of been noted, noted to, uh, among what other projects have been to share. Uh, and it could be a collage of some things, you know? Uh, so I just thought it'd be a good thing to do. Is it a video primarily? Is that what you're thinking? To recap? That could be good if, if, if communications are, and, and, and management could do it. I, but at least you could name and name some things, even as we present the proclamation, would be good as well. So okay. we're recognizing ourselves for City Government Week, which is the week of October 18th through 24th. Again, that Monday being our City Commission meeting anyway. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for the time. Thank you. Any other items from commissioners? All right, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same. We are adjourned. Thank you.